Okay, we're back here live at the OpenStack Summit. This is SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage of the OpenStack Summit. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, founder of siliconangle.com. Joined with my co-host Jeff Frick, and we're here with the uh, Senior Vice President and GM of HP Converged Cloud, Sargulai. Welcome back to theCUBE. Back to theCUBE, You Great. were We talked Great in HP here. Germany, and um, HP has a big presence here at OpenStack. We talked briefly last night at your event. Um, thousands of developers were there. Um, just doing the HP you know, mingling, and you guys put on a great social event last night, and you were saying that things are coming together in your organization. So uh, before we get into some of the Q&A around OpenStack, I want you to just, just update us from when we last talked uh, in, uh, in the fall around uh, in Germany, how it's all coming together with the HP Cloud, now that you're sitting on over all the different groups and coordinating and orchestrating and it's more coherent strategy now, just explain to where are we with, with that and how it's all mapped sure. out within HP. Sure. Well, I mean, as we discussed uh, when we talked in Frankfurt, right, uh, my organization is a pan-HP organization that sort of manages cloud across the entire portfolio of HP. When we talked in Frankfurt, we were just starting. Uh, since then, uh, we know we've significantly built the organization up. Um, you know, I now actually have a whole engineering organization that's, built, that's building core technology. Uh, we've set up a common architecture uh, we've started sort of working in a much more, um, I would say, coherent fashion across organizations. And so I, from a strategy perspective, actually nothing's really changed. Uh, we, we, you know, we set out our strategy uh, in April 2012 about building a cloud that you know, provides customers with choice, consistency. Um, and it, we haven't really changed that, but um, what's, uh, what's changed is that now we're executing much more in a coherent fashion. Yeah, so the engineering side's key, and uh, you know HP's made a lot of strides in, say, OpenFlow, for example, and we're going to have Martin Casada on uh, later in the cube talking with uh, his role at Nasir, now that they was bought part of VMware. So SDN has been a big part of the whole cloud. Can you describe your vision um, and how HP's kind of coming together as a company around uh, OpenStack and the and the cloud initiatives? What is the the converged cloud product vision, and how you guys how are you guys executing? Sure. So, well, you mentioned two different things here. <laughs> uh, right. John does that. Yeah, there's a, uh, two different things. <laughs> so I'll just have take to, your pick. <laughs> I'll take my pick and I'll, I'll We'll pick start with the Converge Cloud so strategy. Con Converge yeah, Cloud product, Converge go cloud, to market. Go to market, I mean, Converge Cloud is all about having one common architecture that provides customers with choice, confidence, and consistency across all deployment models. Whether it's private, public, or managed. Uh, that's really the vision for Converge Cloud because really if you think about cloud, our cloud is about having that flexibility seamless deployment across models and so forth. And so that's the vision for Converge Cloud. Now the way we put that together is we take all the different products that we have in HP, we ensure that they're designed with a common architecture in mind, common user experience, and we package them together as a solution that provides customers with that experience. From a customer perspective, they don't need to know or care which business unit it comes from or so forth, they get a Converge Cloud solution that gives them that flexibility. So that's really what Converge Cloud is about. And you know, even today, right, if you get uh, Cloud System 7.2 with OpenStack, you can easily burst into HP's cloud as well, so on. So we're already starting to do that, we're, we're already starting to provide that, and in the next you know, year, we're going to be providing more and more pieces that are going to have this really common architecture, common experience for customers. Talk about the HP uh, presence in OpenStack. And obviously, you know, most recently, uh, your competitor IBM joined. That created a big splash in terms of, wow, this is really going mainstream. But talk about you guys, how long you've been involved in OpenStack and your relationship with the foundation. Sure, well I think that we talked about this in our keynote, which I'm sure everybody who's watching this attended, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> barring some late sleepers, but. <laughs> Really, you should have been. But <laughs> we broadcasted it live on SiliconAngle.com. <laughs> so there you go. So the you know we actually you know in 2011 we started working on OpenStack. 2011 we were looking at okay what is going to be our next generation cloud architecture, and we looked you know some proprietary systems. We looked at some systems out there in the industry, and eventually we chose OpenStack, right? And and not only did we choose OpenStack, we, we went full force behind it. 
Uh, we worked with Rackspace and partners to make it so that it's not just one vendor, and we actually put a public put up a public cloud with it. Um, then in 2012, right, in order it was you know in order to continue pushing OpenStack and ensure that OpenStack is going to be very successful, we worked again with Rackspace and other partners to create the OpenStack Foundation because you know when you have a lot of big companies doing things, you got to create a structure. Yeah. And we were actually very uh, instrumental in doing that. You know, Eileen Evans, our top lawyer, actually put together the whole structure for how it will work and so on. And so we're very active in there. Uh, obviously, besides that, you know, we are number four contributor to Grizzly from a code perspective. We run the whole CI chain for OpenStack. Monty Taylor does that. Um, and so, you know, we're actually very, very active yeah. in the community around OpenStack. The other thing is, you know, because we run actually run a public cloud on OpenStack, that gives you a lot of insights, right? There's one thing to talk about OpenStack, and the other thing to actually run a business with it. Yeah, and that's their mantra, mantra is here, is to bring code to the table. You also, it sounds like you brought expertise in terms of corporate governance, legal work. That's probably saved some, some uh, <laughs> money for the foundation, but more importantly, you have experience doing that. Um, but talk about, go back, you said something that was interesting before. I mean, HP has a lot of technology in their tool chest. I mean, you could have gone to, into HP Labs, gone across the product groups, and cobbled together a proprietary cloud. You mentioned you decided not to do that. Um, was that an internal decision? You said, hey, you know what? We could do something here, but let's go open. Is that sure. Was that a conscious decision? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the history of HP, right? HP actually has a strong history in supporting uh, you know, open source, right? We were actually, in 2003, right, for those of you who remember, we were actually the first company to indemnify SEO, Intel Enterprise, indemnify Unix, Linux against SEO, Intel Enterprises, it's safe to use Linux. Right, remember that? Yeah, I do. You remember that? Yeah, I do. So we have a strong uh, experience with that, and a strong experience in terms of how, you know, the power of sort of the ecosystem to create innovation. And so we have a ton of technology in HP, and we're going to leverage that technology, and we're putting a lot of management, a lot of other tooling on top of OpenStack. We're developing some differentiated hardware like our Moonshot. But in this case, we felt that there was some really cool technology out there and the ecosystem is going to build something that is very useful. And so this is something that we felt would be best advanced by a whole ecosystem. Great. A question, you guys have a huge footprint obviously in the enterprise. From all the customers that you're talking to, and, and can you speak to kind of the, their changing attitudes about cloud? Um, is, it, is it a carrot that's driving them? Is it a stick that's driving them? Are, are there specific types of applications that are that are either, they're using as a spearhead to enter into this space, or are just so much better suited for the cloud that that's really where you sure. see the early adopters? Well, first of all, everyone's doing something. Uh, but <laughs> I think that, that there's sort of multiple aspects to your question. The first issue is that, you know, the, the, the whole interaction with cloud for customers is a journey. Okay, the average Fortune 1000 company has 5,000 applications, okay? Even if, cloud, everything was perfect and done, you will not be moving all of those to any cloud in one day. So it's a journey of choosing which workloads do you want to do and so forth and how do you want to move there. And that's sort of what we work with customers. Now, there are obviously certain applications that are sort of the first where you get your feet wet and the, the most obvious one obviously is just dev test automation, right? Because if you look at dev test automation, today when you do dev tests, when you're setting up machines and so forth, you know, you go from, it's a very simple use case, you go from 90 days of setting that stuff up to three hours. And so usually that's the first thing people get their feet wet with. Um, but once they feel better about that, then they start looking at other things. Obviously today in cloud, the systems that are most prevalent are systems of engagement. So the applications that were designed with the cloud in mind, in terms of horizontal scaling and so on. But you're also starting to see people looking at how do I move traditional applications as well. So the, the key thing to understand is it's a journey. It's not, I'll do this and that's it, it's okay, Let's look at my business, let's look at where I can get value, primarily speed, this cloud is about speed. At the end of the day, it's time to value. How fast do I get to a result? That's what matters, right? A result of a new service or time a new to business. Value. Time to value. And so where is, can I get the most time to value? And that's where you go apply cloud. And over time, you apply it to other places. And sometimes you'll start with private, then move to public, sometimes you'll do it in public, bring it in house. It's a journey, and that's why it's really important to have this sort of holistic approach across all models, because you don't want to start siloing everything. Right, right. So let's talk about that time to value. I want to drill down on that. I mean, one of the things we commented earlier about Rackspace was how they handled uh, OpenStack, and you know, I was involved in some conversations with them going back to 2009, and you know, prior to OpenStack, you know, they had, they had their own issues. They had to build out their cloud sites and integrate that into have a full-blown cloud, similar to what you guys experienced. And they, didn't, they had open source mindset, and they needed to create a market. So they 
went all in on OpenStack, and their brand has increased significantly in the halo effect on the business side. They have better cloud, they have more developers filling in the white space. So clearly the, there's a business model there, and, and you chose that path. Um, and the other comment we made uh, yesterday was, most of the conversation here at OpenStack Summit's about, cloud is not about hypervisors or VMs. That's right. Okay, and that the clear shift is to more of an operating environment model, basically a data center in the cloud. Um, and that's really where it's shifting, so it's not about the elements. And so I want to ask you the question around uh, Amazon in particular. Uh, Roger kind of briefly touched upon this. They have uh, a real big presence on the volume, the commodity cloud, uh, if you will, for the lack of a better description. You guys have a much more bigger picture and your customer base has a lot of legacy and on-premise. Can you talk about the value side of the cloud with respect to this uh, shift to an operating environment where there's a lot of things to operate within the cloud. So the shift from hypervisor VMs to a much more comprehensive environment and, and why this distinction between volume and value is important. Sure. Well, I think it's not only a question of value. I think that if you look at where cloud has done so far, it's only been a very small place. If you look at the overall workloads and the overall activity happening in enterprise and IT, Cloud's done really well, but it's very, very small. And like anything, as you start to evolve uh, and to expand into bigger areas, right, it starts to be a lot more of shades than just black and white, okay, well this is simple or this is so on. And so I think when you look at enterprises, what we're focused on, right, they have a much more complex environment. They have much higher expectations for business continuity. They do not think a Twitter feed is how you find out if your service is down, right? They want to be able to pick up the phone. They want to have an open system. They want to know that they can migrate from on-premise to off-premise without redesigning their application. They don't want the system to be opaque. They want to be able to look at how it is. If it's open source, they know that they can go look at the code if they have to. So it's a different expectation. It's a much more uh, Is it application-centric more than infrastructure? Well, it's, uh, I think it depends. Again, it depends on the use case. Obviously, you're going to, as you get, I mean, there's different, you know, you do infrastructure when you want to do dev tests, then you go to your basic systems of engagement applications or yeah. your high-end applications that are just doing big data. Those are sort of the new. So you're sort of looking at new applications versus sort of legacy applications. Legacy applications obviously are much more complex. Yeah. And those are going to move over time to the cloud because there are benefits to them. But you know, it comes down in the end, where's your data, right? You, can't, yeah. you have to think about how you want to move them. And so I think, you know, in terms of where things are in cloud in some areas today, and some of these players in the public cloud, they've done the easy stuff, but most of the money is in the hard stuff. And the hard stuff requires a lot more than some of the stuff that's been there yet. Share with us, if you can, just some internal storytelling or comments or anecdotals around what's going on internally around HP, because obviously this cloud positioning is really hot. Um, what's the vibe inside of HP around cloud? I mean, obviously your strategy is clean right now. You got, you are, you're orchestrating across you know, multiple groups now, because you, you mentioned big data. Vertica can plug in here, right? We, we saw uh, Hadoop as a service, very much an element within OpenStack yesterday with Red Hat, Hortonworks, and the Mirantis announcement uh, as a signal that, hey, you know, it's not just hardware, it's below OpenStack, but there's some stuff going on above OpenStack that's cloud related. Related. So, what's what's the mindset internally that you can share? I mean, I know you're you got your public company, you don't want to get in trouble, but you know, what can you share with the folks right. out there about what's happening in HP? Well, I mean, I think look, the, the thing is that's that's really cool that's happening maybe over the last six months is that you know Meg's made the put statement that says C is we're going to be a player in cloud. She's going to invest. She's going to make it happen. She and Bill Vecti have said that, and they've put the wood behind the arrow. And so a lot of things that maybe in the year before and stuff, all you know, people at the bottom always know what needs to happen, but it doesn't always happen. So now there's actually a synchronization where we're saying, wow, we're actually doing what we said we're going to do, we have the money, we have the budgets. People are very excited. They're very excited. It's got a lot of energy. Um, you know, I have people, you know, I have lots of different, uh, you know, openings in my group and I got lots of people applying from within the company, from without the company. It's not hard at all to hire people from the outside. So it's a rallying cry. People are getting behind it big time. They're getting behind it. I think people, again, people believed in the strategy from day one, but I think, you know, after Meg, since Meg's put her foot down and said, I'm going to put the wood behind her, we're going to invest. This is an area that we want to play with. You know, you guys could do, you know, you'll get whatever you need, just go push hard. And people like that, right? That's yeah, and the OpenStack investment here has been paying off because you know you're doing a lot of you did a lot of early pioneering work and helping the foundation come together. And you didn't just you know you're not Johnny come lately into the party. So so you you're there. Where do you see OpenStack growing? Because you know enterprises we talk to, 
like OpenStack because it gives them the benefits of building fast and then integrating in and doing some tweaks. And, and what, how do you see OpenStack evolving as a community and, and how are you guys going to uh, accelerate your presence there? Sure, um, that's a good question. I think OpenStack has done really, really well. Uh, there's a long way to go. It's still not as easy as it could be to deploy it, although I think with System 7.2 <laughs> it's going to be better. You know, en enterprise is mainstream, right? Enterprise is not a few guys playing, it's mainstream. And what we see a lot of people right now on OpenStack is they're playing, but they're not deploying. Yeah. And so we need to get them over there. And the way they're going to get over there is by making it easier to use, making it plug and play, providing a lot of tooling around it that makes it easy. You know, yeah. you know putting it out, I, I mentioned this today in, in the keynote, right? We ship one Linux server in a minute. More Linux servers than anybody else in the world. Imagine what happens if we put OpenStack in those servers. Yeah. So, it, it's And you got the Moonshot announcement, was very innovative. Gantier and Mark Potter, their yeah, team, put yeah. together a killer announcement. Amazing, amazing piece of, uh, piece of hardware. So, um, you know, I think, I think what's next for OpenStack is it needs to sort of, now that we've sort of got it, it's working, people are using it, you're going to get into the usual things in terms of make sure the upgrades work properly because OpenStack, you know, it's continuous integration. Yep. This is not something you upgrade once every two years. Every quarter you get a new load and it better be stable, everything, so that all has to work out. The management's got to be key there. Yeah, and, and, and in management actually is an area where you can add a lot of differentiation. The tooling around that, that's what I said, when people talk about OpenStack, there's the kernel, then there's all kinds of tooling around it and how you talk to applications, how you build ecosystems around it. So there's a lot of work to be done around it. Opportunity for developers as well. I mean, that's a Absolutely. golden opportunity. Absolutely. It's Again, we're moving from the, or, I mean, we're sort of at the beginning, we're, we're at the end of the beginning. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Roger's like, we asked Roger <laughs> we what inning we're going in. Going back to, to what inning are we in of the nine? <laughs> he said with Star Spangled <laughs> Banners being sung, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's pregame. Um, so no, but it's, it's no, a I think, I think, I, I think the, the thing that to look at is, what I always tell people is, look at the, the slope. Okay, the slope is very high, right? And when you look at ecosystems like this, right, they have the power of the network. The more people involved, the faster it moves. Yeah. And OpenStack, I mean, we're talking about this now as a matter of fact, but a year ago, it wasn't like that. Yeah, yeah. Right, a year ago, some people were saying that. We, we were saying it, Rackspace was saying it. A lot of our people were saying, oh yeah, this is too many companies are involved in this. It's never going to happen. No one's been questioning that now. They're just saying, how fast are you moving? Yeah, it's, and we were, and we were big supporters of the OpenStack concept at the beginning, but we also turned skeptic, and you know, we we do fall on our sword when when we uh, when we see the natural things happen. But we were saying, hey, this shouldn't be a pool party. Everyone jumping in and splashing around. It should be real industry standard kind of event because it's otherwise becomes like one big vendor Barney kind of, you know, loving each other, you know. We need to have um, a few good swimmers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, so our last talk was in Germany, so I, I got to ask the, the international questions because cloud, uh, because, you know, that's something that you guys have a huge footprint. Okay. Um, cloud, cloud issues and run data is, is critical. I mean, obviously Germany has their own policy, but you know, outside of the US, outside of North America, how do you look at the cloud there? Obviously, uh, the wood be, is behind the arrow, and how do you look at the global market? Well, first of all, I mean, I actually just spent a week in Europe with some of our top customers, and it's amazing how fast they want to move. I mean, certainly in terms of OpenStack, I mean, you know, Europeans are very sensitive to cost, and OpenStack to them represents a tremendous ability to, you know, unshackle themselves from some of the proprietary software that is used for cloud or for virtualization today. So they're very, very excited about it. Uh, you know, I think from uh, European issues in terms of you know data sovereignty and so forth, they're working through that, yep. and they're finding out that you know there's like everything it's shades of gray. I think people are like saying, oh, Europe, oh, they have all these issues. No, I mean there's a lot of people like we talked about. I mean there's a lot of things that are perfectly happy to run without worrying about all those things. So like anything in cloud, right? As cloud matures, you're going to see more sort of different flavors. There'll be the cloud yeah. for government with data sovereignty. There'll be the cloud for something else. Um, but you it's know, elastic, so it's a resource you can. Yeah, plug and, and also, play, right? you know, some cloud will have to be like anything, right? Some cloud is going to have all these regulations so that yeah. certain industry can work and some won't. And I think that's okay. That's the maturity of the industry is when you start to fragment the specialization. So let's talk about the maturing the maturing industry. So obviously we're early days and you guys are investing big and it's going to be comprehensive cloud from public all the way into private, et cetera. Et cetera, you know, you guys, we covered that. Um, so the question always comes up, when do you address security? And, and you know, Dave Vellante and I always talk about on theCUBE, is security a do-over? Every time you know you come in these inflection points, these transformations, or do you, or do you, you have to have some strategy on security, and it's always a moving target because, you know, it's early days. You got a lot of that's a good word. Yeah, so so it's a moving target. So how do you look at the security? I mean, you got to look over the portfolio within HB, and data is one issue. We talked about the international piece, but now security. As we saw, the hacking is is going on. So what's your view on that? How do you how do you look at that? Sure. Well, first of all, I mean, it's not like it's a do-over in terms of you know we are focused on security a lot. Right, we have you know a large group that is focused solely on security on our public cloud. 
Uh, I think, again, uh, we need to think about, you know, when you think about security in terms of cloud, um, the fact that we're using actually open source makes it more secure because more people are looking at it, right? You have a whole community of experts looking at this every day, and it's not secure because nobody knows what's going on. It's not a black box. So that actually is a tremendous asset in making security. When you look at Keystone, you know how many security experts are looking at Keystone? I can guarantee you a lot more than one vendor. Yeah, yeah. So that actually is helping a lot and drive security, and that's why when you saw our friends this morning, you know, from uh, the three letter agencies, this is why one of the reasons they also want to use it, because they can see the source code, they know what's going on, it's not someone promising them everything's okay. Yeah, well that's proven to be a good model. I mean, open source has been, been, been I mean, although you claim you can see all the code for the bad guys, but the good guys can see it as well. Look, the bad guys will figure out how to see the code, and so you might as well make it secure assuming they can see it. Don't assume they can't see it. That's why open source <laughs> is a better strategy. Great. What else is on your mind these days? Uh, you know, just on a personal or business level, what are you thinking about, and what are some of the things that uh, you know when you kick back, uh, when you're traveling, and you know, and just kind of relaxing? What are you thinking about in terms of the industry? What what what's uh, what's on your mind these days? Well, I think the we we are, we I think what I think about a lot is that we're lucky to be at this time, right? It's always fun to be when there's a fundamental paradigm shift, right? It happened, you know, in 2000. It was it was a fun time. And now we're at the same time, it's a paradigm shift and it's fun to be at the front end of a paradigm shift, it's exciting. I mean, if you like excitement, if you like change, if you like you know, all kinds of dynamic things, it's a really exciting time to be in. You know, people don't appreciate how fun it is until, you know, until... <laughs> we until love, that's why we do the Cube, we do three days of non-stop yeah, coverage yeah, because yeah, it's until, fun. Until it settles down and they say, oh, back in those days, you know. I remember when? <laughs> and I remember when, you know, people, you know, I was come from the networking world. I remember when people were talking about Wi-Fi and we're arguing about, you know, where we're going to use 802 11X, or we're going to do this, this, this. I mean, yeah. we're arguing about all these things today. It's like, I'm just going to connect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's, uh, it's exciting to be at the formation of the industry. You can then look back and say, look at all these decisions that we made, look at all this. I don't think people appreciate just how exciting these times are. Yeah, and open source gives you guys a lot more collaboration touch points as a big company. You guys you know, can be nimbler with open source. So I got to ask the question because you are the czar atop of the cloud uh, vision with HP and you report right to the top. Um, obviously a lot of startups coming out of this community, you know, and you guys do M&A and HP doesn't, you don't just take your M&A policy, but you know, there are startups out there. So what advice would you give to, to growing companies, whether they're venture back or self-funded or just a couple guys in the garage coming out with a product that you know, are going to look really well, but at some point they're either a feature in the white space or, and then they might be a target for HP or somebody else. What advice would you give them as a senior executive out there who might be looking for you know, moving faster through acquisition as well as the organic R&D. Yeah, so obviously I will make no comments on <laughs> acquisitions whatsoever, even if we do that, but yes, we, you know, I think, I think from a startup advice, I'll always give them the same advice, which is solve a real problem. That is a real problem. Don't, you know, just because something you can do is technology, so what? Uh, nobody cares, right? Solve a real problem, and ideally something that is fundamental. Uh, cloud does represent a challenge because there's a monetization challenge for cloud, which is why actually big companies are in a better shape because they can monetize across a much wider swath. But you know, solve a real problem. Uh, that's you know, that's my main thing. Okay, final question because I know we're tight on time. You got a roll, and, and uh, we're on our next guest coming up. Uh, uh, looking out on the five-year horizon, just you know your personal perspective, you're going to be driving the, the cloud shift for HP, which is going to touch a lot of things within the company. It's going to be an operating system. You have edge of the network, you have the intelligent edge, devices, bring your own device. So, you know, infrastructure as code. How do you look at the next five years? Shoot the arrow forward and think and, and share your vision for the next five years for the industry, you know, across the industry and, and HP uh, as, a, as a player in that industry. Well, five years is a long time in an industry, right? Five years in, in this industry <laughs> is, you know, forever. I can predict seven things and I'll be wrong on, you know, <laughs> six and a half, but, I think the if you I mean if you should look at we should look at the evolution of I mean funny enough look at the evolution of the smartphone and look at what happened there in terms of everything's automated it's simple it's auto install you don't have to think about it right today cloud is not like that um, you're thinking about a lot of things it's this big thing you worry about you know five years from now it just should be right we shouldn't be thinking about all these things it should all be in the background and you should be just managing services and all the internals of how it happens, how it's governed, where are your app shops, how things get upgraded, where do you get your solutions, which cloud, is it public or private? That should all be seamless. You shouldn't have to worry about it. It should all be hidden from you the same way that on your smartphone, all the stuff that happens in the background is completely hidden. The user doesn't care. Again, at the end of the day, it's all about the user 
or the customer. All the technology is fascinating, but the more you can hide it, the better it is actually the experience will be. And so a lot of the complexity that we're now dealing with as we're sorting through and building these solutions, that's all going to be hidden. And really it'll be, you know, you know, it will almost be pretty much like, you know, just services. I mean, cloud's about services. And whether the services that you're consuming are going to come from a private or managed or public, and how are you going to pick up new services or are the catalogs going to be here, there, it will be seamless for you. You'll just go to a catalog somewhere, pick out your service, and they'll be sourced from where they need to be sourced. And in many cases, they'll be composite. Right, so you may get a service yeah. from here, and it may pull service from a bunch of other places, but you're just going to get your service and choose it on your menu. Sar, great to have you on theCUBE, and great to see you again, and we'll see you at HP Discover. Um, you're leading the ship at HP, you're driving the big cloud bus and going across the company, reporting right to the top. You guys have made a great uh, investment in OpenStack, it's paying off, and, and uh, folks should know that, and congratulations to HP for, for that bold move. So we really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. This is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of OpenStack Summit 2013, Portland, Oregon. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>